right, so we've got in the router, you can't really see it, there's the same bit, but I changed out the bearing, and it's got a, a uh, it's going to cut a rabbit. A rabbit that looks a lot like this rabbit. This rabbit is deep enough, in enough, for two layers of purfling and a layer of binding, and it's deep enough for the layer, the thickness of the purfling. That gives me, this is my purfling rabbit. And then after I do the purfling rabbit, I'll do a binding rabbit. That's I'll drop the bib down, and I'll put a different bearing on and make a shallower cut. Um, so I'm set. I'm just going to run it for the top and back here. I'm just going to run this. Um, we are set to do. Set to go here. So I'm just going to get it. Just going to get it and uh, go for it. So here we are, routing the purfling rabbit. All right, so I've switched out the, the bearing to one that leaves a slightly shallower, but it, or a narrower, but I can go deeper. So that'll be this rabbit here. Um, so that should leave me just the right amount to get binding in all the way around. And I'm still being very careful not to fall into this little dip because once the binding rabbit's routed, I can put my, whatchamacallit, I can put my what am I trying to say exactly? I can put my heel graft in and it can get glued. So let's get the binding rabbit done now. Um, so we're just gonna glue the heel graft heel graft in now. Uh, so the plan will be heel graft goes in, I'll cut it short, uh, shorter, get it flush-ish, get it really close to flush. And then we'll do a, a, the rabbit for the binding and the purfling on it, actually. We'll probably just cut it shy of all of that. And then if, uh, of the purfling so I don't have to deal with that but maybe I'll leave it there I'm not sure yet um, so I'm just gonna get it in I'm not sure if you can hear me I'm gonna get it into the slot let that get glued in so that I can do the next steps for the binding after that um, so we'll just pop it out apply a little glue after you clean your nozzle Stuff in a bit of the glue. And I'm going to make my finger all messy. So I want to get some up onto these side walls here and down into those corners. Oops. Making a mess up on the top surface is not necessary. Fill those areas, that's a lot of glue actually. That's going to be a plenty of the glue. I will get lots of squeeze out. I'm going to go grab a there. This is going to make some squeeze out for sure. Okay, just slide on down to it nearly and then get some good coverage. And I'm going to, oof, it's really, really a lot of glue. I'm going to wipe that extra excess off because there's way too much glue there. And one more little oozing. And I'm literally going to let the wedging action, in fact, I'm going to tap it just a tiny bit. I suppose with my chisel is fine. Yeah. Seems like it is. Good. 
Now we'll let that dry after I wipe some of this extra squeeze out out of there. This side as well. And, uh, yeah, this is good. This is going to be fine. This looks great, actually. Um, it's way thicker than it needs to be, but that's okay. Uh, so we'll, there you go, heel graft in place. Um, I'm going to let that dry, and then I'll come back, and we'll get it flushed and uh, trimmed, the ends trimmed, uh, for the binding that's going to go around it. So this is going to take some doing. I, I'm, it's a tricky little uh, joint that I'm trying to trying to make happen here. Hopefully I can pull it off. We'll see. We shall see. Uh, yeah, so we'll bring you back when that's dry. Alright, so one thing I forgot to do, or didn't do, it was related with testing and getting bending going, is I didn't bend the binding, and it's going to go on a lot easier if I pre-bend it, because this stuff's pretty stiff. So I'm setting up, as you can see, to do the bindings Bending, bending the binding, binding, bending, bending, binding, bending, binding, bending, binding, bending, beady, 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 um, what? I don't know. Uh, a little water, we're all set, so. This stuff is now chilly, and we can see what happened here. Um, I think we'll do this first. And we'll do a little of this as well, and then this. Put it here, and here. So, still a little warm in there, but not too bad. And I'm going to pop this. That makes life much easier. And now, this can just come straight up. Now, let's do like that bit first. I guess we're going to grab it all. Got them all, wood and everything. Oh, can't go far with that. I've got the heating blanket here. Hold on a second. Yeah, we gotta move that. Because that's in my way. This I can set here. These things. These things can be good. No cracking and they look really good. Alright. And there's paper stuck to them. Is this where it got a little warm? Yeah. The paper is sticking here. But that's minor because that'll get scraped away. That's cool, actually. I'm very pleased. Not a single one cracked or delaminated or twisted. This is good. This is really good. All right. Our binding is... I've decided my binding, I guess. Interesting. Very cool. Okay, so... All pre-bent binding now. The only thing we got left is... Oops, I'm going to set it up and make it, take a neat picture, I think. I'm going to try to set it up and take a neat picture. Um, but, hey, came out pretty good. Okay, the glue is dried enough on the heel block, um, or the heel graft, I should say. I'm a little uncertain about my work holding here. It's on. It's not going anywhere. I just don't know if it's a good position. Um, and I'm just going to saw the majority of this waste off somewhat close. In fact, I'm going to put a bit of tape along this area so that I'm a little less than on that surface and just sort of help avoid uh, too much too much trouble there. So I'm just going to try to flush it with the surface here. Alright, so now I want to get it thickened properly here. 
And I think I can work it with the plank. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, we can. This is going to do fine. Although it's tearing, so it must be this way. Am I getting tear out both ways? Probably. Good enough there, we can get the rest of this with Santa Pepper. Set that like so. Try to keep it reasonably close to uh, held. Hitting the 80 grit here for the moment to get us really close to flush. I'm going to scrape that because we're not close, we're not flush yet in the middle. that we're flush now that's good I'm gonna do a quick little repair job right there because it's bothering me um, we're gonna get a little glue and I'll show you here in a second okay so we're pretty close to done on this graft except I need to trim it here but I've also got this um, I got a little bit of a mess down here where some stuff tore out just checking that I'm good on this side too. There's some sawdust there that I want to... Yeah, I think we're okay on this side. Looks like we're going to be okay there. So, I want to fix this little ding here while I have the opportunity. Um, it's a little ick at the moment. So what I'm going to do real quick is slip in a bit of sawdust with glue here. Um, all right, we've waited long enough for this to dry up, so I'm just gonna do a little, uh, I think this is 80 grit here. And just smooth it all nice and smoothly. Mm. Nope, that's fine. Just blending it all in now. point here that's just not staying high. There we go. And the whole mess simply disappears. Nice and smooth. I'm with it. I'm liking it. I dig I dig my outcome. All right, so then, ugh, excuse me, then, um, next steps will be clean out. Actually, the next steps are just gonna be, yeah, I'm gonna take a chisel to that area, clear that out, clear that out. And then we gotta cut these short, but not fully to the depth of this, to this rabbit. I wanna go this rabbit minus the thickness of this maple. Because I'm trying, I'm going to attempt, I'm going to do my best to attempt to kind of do a bit of a weird, um, like miter type joint right there. So we'll see. I'm going to get my tooling set up and figure out my process. I'll bring you back. Okay, so you can see the, the maple strip on the, <clears throat> on the binding and the maple strip here are the same thickness because they're the same board, same piece. I want this to come across like this, but I don't want the maple here. I don't want to have the maple cross here. I want to have the maple make the turn because it looks better and it's harder to do and you know worst possible case if i screw this up i can just have the binding go across like this and i'll live with it yeah that's okay so i'm going to try this i think with a marking gauge i can get 
a line that tells me where to leave my rosewood like that it sticks out a little past maybe a little more than I need it to which is fine I'd rather have too much and have to finesse it in um, and then the next bit is I need to <clears throat> I need to very very carefully remove this chunk and I'm thinking I'm gonna try a little roughing with my saw here but I'm gonna try to stay away from that line like this <sighs> drive very 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 carefully it's very hard to do this it's quite, it's quite nerve-wracking to do I will tell you that I see. It's got the cross cut has the scoring teeth making lines that are confusing my eye. There we go. Just try to, you know, I want to bulk remove as much as I can out of my way so that I'm not fighting the bulk of things with chisels, with finer uh, removal tools. And it's okay if I cut below. I don't need to leave any of this rosewood inside the channel because the binding's gonna push against the purfling up at the top too as well. I kinda need to get the purfling channel clear as well. Okay, so that's the start. I've got quite a lot left there that I haven't taken away yet. I apologize if any of that was difficult to see. Um, now I should be able to Come at it, come at this stuff at least, very gently, get rid of this waste. I think I can take care of that, whatever's left here with sandpaper. Okay, now I can get back to focusing on my, uh, my mark here, my line. I'm gonna start halfway up that line. I don't wanna take the whole thing yet. I wanna just nibble my way across that, cause it's a little fat there. There's a little extra wood there that I don't need. That'll just be making this less accurate if I try to take it all in one big bite. Now down here, eh, I'm just glad this chisel is really, really sharp. Okay. Now down in here, I'm gonna stick my chisel in the line. Okay. Try to undercut just a tiny bit if I can, because I want it. I'm more concerned about it meeting at the top surface than I am about seating all the way. There we go. Okay. Back in our line here. Try to find my line here. Try to cut backwards a bit. I've also know that I've got a little bit to play with here because I set the marking gauge a little heavy to leave a little bit. But we just keep working our way across using that marking gauge line as our kind of guide. Now, that all looks really nice. What I need to do now is get a block. I want to sand a little bit. And I want to make sure that I get my depth of this 
Uh, we've already gone a bit far, I think. We'll see. We'll see. I'm going to check this. Yeah, we might have gone a bit far. It might be too tough to miter that. It's a very tiny, tiny, tiny miter if it's anything. Um, I'm going to undercut here a little bit. Just keep undercutting this because I want the binding to come right up against it. Alright. Now if I just hold up yeah, we might still be able to do it. Okay, so there's a little spot here in this walnut that is deceptive. It makes me think I have less channel than I really do. There we go. That's better. <laughs> okay. Come on now. Okay, I'm going to give get you guys in just a little better here. Because the next step is kind of... Um, Kind of big and tricky and detailed, so I'm gonna try to get you in a little closer if I can. Okay, so we're trimmed to the length, I think. We're very close to that length. We've got a little bit of sandpaper stuck to some MDF, and I'm just holding it against here and kind of looking at where my, my uh, straightness is, and it looks really close right now. I'm just gonna do a tiny little cleanup here. And then a little bit down here, turned on its back here, just so I have a nice smooth surface against which to ride. Okay, right here, you can see there's a little bit, it's extending past. I want to miter the maple. Just a tiny little miter. I'm going to do the same on this side. I'm going to clear out whatever schmutz is down in there right now. And I literally want to just miter such a tiny little amount so I've just got this really sharp chisel and I'm holding it at about a 45 and just kind of cutting down like that that's kind of my miter right there no that's not kind of that's it I just did that side okay so let's see if I can do that on this side that one went pretty well I'd like to see if I can do the same here mm, got to get the angle right There it is. That's my miter right there. It's as good as I'm going to get a miter out of it anyway. Okay. So, hopefully I just did that right. We'll see. And I don't know if you'll be able to see any better this way, but that's my mitered maple. If I did this right, I uh, hope I did this right, that maple is now mitered properly. Um, I'm going to do a real quick little fill here because I don't like having all this gap. Um, I'm going to find some stuff to put in here um, somewhere. Somewhere I can find a gap filler, something to fill that in. Because I don't want, I don't want to have the binding, because the binding is going to sit like this. I'll cut this away, right? Let's see if I can demonstrate that well enough. Let's see. So that's going to be... Right there, I will take there, if I can peel that up nicely enough to sort of demonstrate, one second here, I'm almost done, try to demonstrate the miter that I'm trying to make happen. It's actually going to be two pieces here, but you'll kind of get the idea that we're headed for that sort of look. Did it? Is that following in there? I feel like, oh, I think I might just need to move that miter back just a tiny bit further. Let's see how that does. And that's the plan right there. It's basically something like that. If I can get that to kind of pull off. Are you following me? I think you are now. That's what I'm after, though this is going to be two pieces. I'm going to get a seam right here because I'm going to have both side pieces are going to meet right in here. Because um, I don't have long enough bits to go all the way around, um, unfortunately. And I just this is the best place to put a joint. I might be able to scarf this joint right here. We'll see. Um, but that is exactly what I'm after.
And so you see that the maple continues around here instead of coming through. So if I can make this work, and it looks like I may be able to, fingers crossed, eh? But that's what we're after. So I just want to fill in this gap so we're not bridging all that. Um, and I'm wondering how thick that is. Is it, is it thick enough to be a rosewood patch there? Yeah, it is. Okay, well, then we'll just just clear the, the maple from this bit. And we'll use it. So we got to make this a bit thinner, but I'm just going to make a patch out of the rosewood that's sitting here. Let's go with right about there. Okay, we'll make a quick... Uh, quick cut and I'll bring you right back okay just a little bit of glue and we'll make this little bridge there can be tiny gaps I just don't want a big old you know three-quarter inch long gap if I can help it and I can in this case just get enough glue on it here okay and then we'll Press it down into place here. And just like that, it's got enough pressure. I'm going to take uh, this block and keep it pressed against that and down, but mostly down to let the, uh, the glue dry. Okay, that's in place now. That's not going anywhere. And that's just going to bridge so that the binding doesn't have as much to span. Um, I think that's going to be safe. I'll come back with this and sand it nice and smooth and flush and whatnot. But in the end, that's going to be a better seat for this than anything else. Because I remember there's going to be ends right here. I don't want to have two ends coming to join right here over a bunch of air. I want to actually have a seated a nice good seat for it to sit on good place for it to get seated to so I'm just going to keep pushing that into place and keep that from getting too bad um, I think if I were to do this again I don't know I still think this has to come in after the binding rabbit um, I could probably reset the router and cut this rabbit ledge with the router but Putting it by hand feels safer, it's just I don't need to go quite as deep. I could have probably preserved it. I'll try to preserve this one. We'll see what happens. I'm going to preserve the, the short, the narrow end one. Um, so I'm just going to let this glue dry, and then we'll come back and clean it up a little bit. really good there I'm happy I'm very happy with that and once that's fully cured fully dried I'll uh, I'll take care of it I think we might be ready for the installation of the bindings I have to get it really really close to where it's got to be I have very little in fact you know what I'm gonna start here and work my way that way because that's the uh, long end okay I'll work out my process here and I'll be bringing you bring you back okay so we're working out now the, the purfling that we've got here black white um, I've got two layers of that for this rabbit and I'm working out which way to orient it and I had sort of started with it like this, where it's white, black, white, black, rosewood binding. Um, but I'm not a fan, not quite a big fan of that. I'm not a huge fan. But if I switch it around, that I actually like. So if I just do black, white, black, white, then binding. I actually like that um, for a couple of reasons. Um, the two ledge, the two layer binding is a little fatter than I wanted anyways. 
but I didn't feel like separating the black and white bits and I didn't have anything suitable to use otherwise. So the black, I'm fine with it being as white as it is and I'm fine with the black being there, but I think it, it will blend better this way so that it doesn't make the binding look fat. Um, I don't want the binding to look super thick and if there's a black against the binding, like this was, even if we do like this where it's make the white thicker, this was kind of my second choice, but I don't like the black against the binding. The black against the binding makes the binding look fatter than it needs to be. Um, I don't want it to look that fat. Um, I wanted the thinner line. So having it alternate black, white, black, white, starting from the inside out is a, my preferential, preferential, preferred arrangement. I prefer that arrangement quite a lot, actually. It's my favorite. If I can hold them well enough to get it aligned, hold on a second here. Come in, this in, like, like, like that. And so that's basically my binding now. That's the.